Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to answer a really, really great question that I received on this channel, which is related to which inhalers can we use with a spacer device? So a spacer device is something like this. It's basically a little bottle-like contraption that we use in the case of inhalers that produce a little bit of a mist. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So for example, we've got a Ventolin inhaler here, just like a normal blue inhaler. Now, when we press on the button, it just produces a little mist. I hope you've seen that. And many patients really struggle to catch that because it's moving really, really quickly. So you can see it's just trying to catch that and inhaling that into your lungs can be a little bit tricky. And then the composition of that mist is really interesting because the side of that plume of mist, basically, contains larger droplets. But the center part of the plume actually has very, very small particles. And these are the ones that you're actually inhaling to go in deep inside the lungs where they need to act. So for example, in the case of asthma, you want the medication to reach the smaller airways. So you can imagine the large airway starts to branch off many, many times, and then it reaches really, really small bronchioles, and that's where usually the inflammation is causing the problem in the case of asthma. In the case of COPD as well, so generally it's the smaller airways that really need to get the medication delivered to them in order to open them up a little bit so that you can breathe better. So basically, with these spacers, you would use some kind of inhaler that would produce a mist on its own. So it would contain a pressurized device, sort of a pressurized capsule inside, that goes in, and then when you press on it, it releases a plume, right? So this one's a bit spent, unfortunately. I think it's one of my demonstrator devices that has been, well, it works now, but basically it hasn't been used for a while. But as you can see, it produces a plume of mist, right? And trying to inhale that can be a little bit tricky. Now when, when I use one of these, if I connect it to the end and it needs to fit, so you can tell if your inhaler works with this or not, if it fits in the end bit. So it has a little hole here and then this mouthpiece should be able to connect firmly to that little hole and it doesn't fall out. So that means that this spacer is compatible with this type of inhaler and most pressurized meter dose inhalers will work like this. So when I press on, on this button, when I toggle it, the mist is just sort of released inside there. Now the large droplets that I mentioned from that plume will deposit on the sides of this device and that allows me to just simply inhale slowly, taking a deep breath out, re emptying my lungs and then slowly breathing in all that fine particles, all those fine particles in the center of the plume that haven't yet deposited on the sides. Obviously, you wouldn't wait that long, but now, for example, I could breathe out and then take a slow deep breath in. And I would just inhale the small particles that are suspended in the air, and those would reach the deeper parts of the lungs. Now, this is really important because it's a more efficient delivery mechanism for these types of inhalers that produce little mist. And it's also great in case your inhaler contains corticosteroids because the large droplets will end up depositing on the upper airways, on the tonsils, things like that. And if you don't rinse them out, and you can't in most cases, although it is recommended to rinse out your mouth and your throat and gargle a little bit and spit that water out after you use corticosteroid inhaler, in many cases you can't really rinse out everything from there. And sometimes you patients can get side effects such as a hoarse voice or some candidiasis, things like that, because of the use of corticosteroid inhalers. Now the dose of corticosteroid is very low in all the inhalers, I need to mention that, so it doesn't really get absorbed in the rest of your body, it's just a local effect that sometimes occurs when you're unable to use such a device correctly. Now the second part of the question that I received related to the use of a spacer with Symbicort or maybe Ceratide or Relvar or one of these dry powder inhalers or the DPIs. Now the inhalers that contain a powder inside, so such as Symbicort for example, the tube inhaler, the Relvar, Ceratide and some others, those ones they don't produce a mist on their own. You need to be producing the, the force that will 
pull the powder inside your airways. So these ones are not compatible with spacer devices. For these ones, you just need to breathe out and breathe in forcefully when the device is activated according to the way it's used. So these are not for spacer devices. These work differently. They have a powder in inside. You need to inhale forcefully to get that powder moving from inside this device and into the deeper parts of your lungs. So that's, that means emptying your lungs first, taking a deep breath in, deep strong breath in, holding your breath for 10 seconds and slowly releasing. Now, with the other inhalers, such as these ones, like the blue inhaler, the Ventolin, that produces this sort of plume, yes, they are very much compatible with spacer devices, and usually the spacer devices are a much better delivery system. So I hope this clarifies this little question a little bit, and if you have further questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer in future videos. All the best to you. Good health.